God Hits. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, we are on day four. Y'all, we only got one day left. This is day four of the Overwhelm with the Weight series. This is for all my beautiful subbies and all of you who are just passing through. If you are struggling with waiting on God, how many people can relate, right? I know I can, baby. I be saying I overstand, honey. The weight, your girl is, ooh, I'm top, I'm, I'm, I'm top of the pops on the, on the waiting, baby. I got a PhD and all the other, whatever, other masters and summa cum laude, magna cum laude, all of that in waiting, okay? Yeah, y'all know I'm silly. If not, welcome. You're going to get the silliness. Um, But y'all, like, so if you have not, if you're just joining me today, I want you to stop. I want you to hit the link in the description, and I want you to go back and listen to the other episodes that led you to this one, okay? I think that that's going to give you more context, and I think you would enjoy it a lot more. Now, if you just want to listen to this one, Please feel free, but always know you can listen to the other ones and you can get the whole series. They're not that long. They run about 20 to 30 minutes each episode. So yeah, so with that being said, download your ebook in the description. There's the Overwhelm with the Weight ebook. I want you to get that and follow along. In the last series, y'all, I was able to kind of just, you know, go page for page and I walked everybody through. That's the forgiveness series. And y'all, everything that I mentioned, any series, any ebook, any any shirt, any product, mug, book, anything like that, the link is always in the description. So I don't want to say that so much, but y'all know, like, share, subscribe, turn on the notifications, you dig? Let's get all the housekeeping out so we can get to the good part. Um, but yeah, so let's see y'all. So Monday, what do we talk about? Monday was all these things. That was Matthew 6, 33. On Tuesday, we talked about, ah, Psalm 37, 4, seek your happiness in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So that was called desires of your heart. And then yesterday we did that Joshua. We did that Joshua 1, 7 through 9, where it talked about good prosperity and success and why if you are too impatient, if you are mad at God while you're waiting, Yesterday kind of broke down why some of that good, good prosperity and success you're looking for may not have come yet. So circle back to that if you haven't. But let's get on to today because y'all know I like talking about the good stuff. Let's talk about the reward. Okay. So today is based off of Psalm 19, 8 through 11. Let's read it. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting, and forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey him. Mm. So I know a lot of y'all mad and you all here because you're like, girl, I'm so tired of waiting. Well, what you going to say, girl? I know you overwhelmed with the weight, but let me ask you a better question. Do you want your reward? Hit the chat. Let's talk about it. Did y'all know that like the easiest way to forfeit a promise from God is to ignore his instruction? I kind of brought y'all in on that yesterday. You know, I kind of kicked it off yesterday. But here's the thing. The immediate backlash typically includes a range of emotions that the enemy sets awry in your life. So let me tell you what I mean by that. The biggest one is forgetting who God the Father is. Yeah, I said it. I had to say it. I had to say it because it wasn't just for y'all, it's for me too. Listen to me. When you start to ignore God's instructions, you will get immediate backlash. That is just how it works. That's why God says obedience is greater than sacrifice. That's why some people don't understand when they say, well, I sacrificed and I bought all of this for this person and I spent all this money on this person. The Lord was saying, I didn't even tell you to do none of that. It's like you want me to get a cookie because you work 40 extra hours to make a sacrifice for somebody when I just told you to be obedient to the person over here. But you was too busy trying to impress this person and give them what they said because you forgot who I was. Ooh. Ouch. Y'all know my series be ouchy. My series be ouchy type things sometimes. But it's the truth. 
But that is precisely why he did not say something was wrong with sacrifice. But a lot of what keeps us from God's reward is that we put sacrifice in obedience place. And now we confused. Now we upset. Now we mad at God. But is it fair? Is it really fair? You dealing with your backlash and the range of emotions because the enemy has set your life awry. Because you forgot who your father is. You're like, what you mean, Robin? What you mean? I didn't forget who my daddy was. Well, let me tell you how you forgot. Did you forget that the price was already paid for you? And did you forget that when God gives us instructions, it's because he knows better. So what's the saying we say? I don't think this is biblical, but it's a good saying. When we know better, we what? Y'all say it with me. We do better. So the reward is on the other side of doing better, right? Yo, God running the show here, not us, right? So how can he run the show if we're allowing our emotions to run it for him? Uh-oh, come on now. Like I said, baby, bought the t-shirt on that one. You waiting for joy in a sweet life, Right? And you're thinking that they're there for the taking, but you keep saying, Lord, this is just, just, just too hard to obtain, right? It's just too hard to obtain because it's hard to obtain those things when you go about achieving it in a way contradictory to God's way. That's where the problem comes in. Hence, you're overwhelmed with the weight. You have not gotten your reward. And again, your frustration, I've been telling you all this every day at its core, you are mad because you are you want to get it, but you don't want to be obedient in order to get it. You want to skip the steps. Well, 14,000 prophets then told me I was going to get a gift on Sunday. And the Lord is like, yes, daughter. Yes, son. But all you've talked about is this prophecy. You didn't even look at the prophetic word and say, hey, am I sure this is a prophetic word? Or is this just a word of knowledge? Is this the word of wisdom? Is this a false word? Is this somebody telling me something because they really want the best for me? Are all of these people in cahoots? Whatever. Did you even go through the process of that thing? And then once you do it, you come back and say, well, the Lord ain't give me this and the Lord ain't give me that. Oh, Lord. And you all angry and you all mad with God. But truth be told, it's not really God's fault. Because the, the, the problem is, at, at the end of the day is that your whole purpose and point of moving in the direction that you're moving in is because you're just trying to get something from God. You want to get this thing that you're waiting for from God and you're not, you're not standing on your laurels. You're not, you're not being, you're not being who you need to be in him to be honest and say, you know what? Hold on. I have been doing things contrary to your word, right? Listen, y'all. Let, let me explain something to you. If you don't follow the things that God tells you to do, if you don't reverence him, you will instantly feel overwhelmed. How many of y'all been fighting depression or anxiety? Y'all don't know how many times when my nerves get bad, I be done forgot, Lord, I didn't even say my prayers. Because you get so caught up in what's coming at you. I, listen, I've had situations where in retrospect, y'all y'all ever have a situation with somebody or an experience somewhere and it just kind of takes you off guard. And then when it's over, you say, oh, I wish I knew, baby. Oh, I wish I knew. I would have told him out the frame. Or I would have, but you're so taken aback and you're so thrown off guard by it. Like if you at work and they say, hey, the next person to get this project done, they're going to get a $50,000 raise. Something ostentatious or crazy like that. And you're like, well, wait, I wasn't even prepared. And there's another person who kind of just sneak in because they prepared and they're ready. And they just get it and they go get it. And you know, if you notice, y'all, I say a lot of really big over-the-top things. And you want to know why I do that? Because I just need you to think higher. I did a word last week and I was saying how uh, you're going to kill the burden. You know, y'all know the drill. Hit the link in the description. It's there. You can listen to it. But when you see kill the burden, I said that some of y'all are going to be called to buy somebody a house. And it's not even going to be a bother to you. It's literally not. You're going to have so much wealth. It's... You just, you're going to be like, God going to be like, buy them a house. You're going to be like, okay, 
Where you want me to get them a house at? And you will literally be able to not just afford it, but you'll be able to, able to get 10 more of those houses if you needed to, or even if you wanted to. I said another thing about how God might pull one of y'all and say, hey, get a, um, give them $50,000 and you're just going to give it to them. So I'm just telling y'all that because if you, again, if you're new here, I say real obtuse off the wall things. And I say those things jokingly, but I just wanted to know, I do that for a reason. I be want y'all to think up. Cause I know sometimes I say that stuff. You say $50,000. Oh Lord. Yay. That could be you. You don't know what can happen. You can get any type of resource God wants to drop down from heaven. Again, bread from heaven, y'all. know I got something on that, too. I'm so silly. I'm just feeling like everything I'm referencing, I really do have something to say about it. But y'all get my point. Let's get back to this so we can wrap up. Listen, I think the biggest thing that's going on with this series that I'm noticing from what y'all are telling me, what other people are letting me know about it, is that you know you're not necessarily supposed to be mad at God. You're not, you're not necessarily, you don't know how not to be. That's what I think most people struggle with. Just kind of listen to everybody. You don't really know how not to be, right? But listen, no matter what you do, when you're trying to do something without God and without you including him, you will never feel like you could get it right or get it together. I can promise you that. If you're listening to this thing right now, you're like, Lord, I just feel like I can't get it together. I feel like I can't get it. Listen, the only, the only way you're going to start to see a glimmer of hope is if you reconnect to the Father. Let the Holy Spirit lead you on how to reconnect. But let me tell you a surefire way to connect. Go back to his word. Listen, the scripture says that being obedient to these laws is sweeter than honey, better than gold, and his laws are fair. How many of y'all would want something sweeter than honey? Okay, listen, better than gold? Baby, you give me all gold, everything, and I'm shining, honey. I'm taking it. He's saying it's better than that. So, my y'all, my point, I got to oversimplify this because I believe it's an act of service to you guys with, with this series you are going to be free of being obsessed with waiting and get down to what needs to be done and not the thing you're mad at God that you're waiting on. Lord, I've been waiting forever for my man to get it together. I've been waiting for my, my son to do right. My daughter, she cutting up and the people at my job, I'm so sick of them. Okay, you are valid in that. Look, y'all know how I feel about that. Express yourself, baby. I don't want you to say that it's not a problem and it is a problem. That's not what we're doing here. But baby, we're not going to do no victim mentality over here. I did that for a decade. Dead that. I refuse to let you be on this page and let you do it too. I can't control nothing you do, but the best I can do is break it down for you like this from a different perspective. That's something somebody told me. I think that's what my gifting is right, right up in this space and on this platform. I could give it to you from another perspective. There are many perspectives. Mine is not the only perspective, but when God gave me a gift, just like he gave you a gift, because we're here to help you live your authentic purpose, he teaches me how to authentically tell you in another way so that you don't go to condemnation, but you go to conviction. And then you say, you know what, Ro? Girl, you're right. God told me to tithe and I didn't tithe. I was supposed to get that person something and I didn't do it. Or, you know, y'all get what I'm saying, right? You, you have to understand that. Look, the beautiful thing about all of this, when you start to follow the word of God, guess what happens? You get the promise of his reward. It's right there in Psalm 19, y'all. Your girl not making it up. I can make up some kicks and giggles. I can make up some stuff, but this is so good. I really don't even have to, you know, like I really don't have to listen. There is nothing that can compare to the reward when God gives it to you. When God gives you a reward, nothing can compare to it. Nothing. Let me say it one more time. Nothing. Cause listen, you could easily be fooled. By getting things halfway. Okay. Halfway following the laws of God. Halfway following the things that he's saying. And you want to know something? Again, this is something I don't know nobody, including myself, that don't struggle with. Even the highest minister, pastor, 
even a lay person like myself who's not a ordained this or a special that i don't those are things that are beautiful i was not called to that right at least not in the season that i know of right so what point is to you is the person listening to the youtube is the person with the youtube page is the person that's the leader of the church and is the person that built the church follow me here baby y'all got what i'm saying it, it it does not matter these are things that we all struggle with i don't know anybody in the world that just constantly be on it all the time if they do bless their heart i'm not and i'm not about to stun up here and act like i am because i'm not I'm not about to tell y'all because I got a YouTube page, you might not catch me slipping. I tell y'all all the time, I keep praying and working on my mouth. I got to watch and make sure no, no bad words come out. I got to watch and make sure my posture because I'm, I've always been honest about that. I never lied about that. I've always had that shawl coming. And that's the thing the devil don't like. He don't like us to talk about stuff like this because he wants you to be trapped in a weight and he wants you to make you feel like you a loser. They got some of y'all, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, this is just coming in. This off script. Some of y'all listening to me right now and you don't want to go start your YouTube page behind your mouth. That is not the thing to kill you. Just be honest about it. You got to help more people with what you can say correctly than what you can't say incorrectly. I need you to understand that because that's what the point is. The point is, oh, I'm going to have them so stuck. They're going to be so disgusted. They're not going to be. They're going to be so aggravated with God because they're waiting so long and they're going to miss the assignments that God is telling them to do. Yesterday's, yesterday had a big message on the one about good prosperity and success. Go back and swing back. Circle back to it. Listen to what it said. It was telling you it wasn't about doing the things to get the promise. It was about doing the things to be positioned for the promise. A lot of y'all, you just have it twisted. Not because something wrong with you, but you just didn't understand. And a lot of times we don't have the understanding because we don't want to sit with the word of God. Y'all don't understand. I be having Siri read to me. I be having a Bible app read to me. Everybody be reading to me because sometimes it just be hard. I don't want to sit there and hold the phone or hold the book. I don't, but I want to hear the word of the Lord. So I got to be creative so that it don't stop me. If I'm around a mentee, a, a niece, a nephew, shoot, read that for, read that for T-Roll, baby. Because that's what I'm saying. Like you, if you really want it, you want it. And here's another thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just think it's going to be a little bit of deliverance with some people when they get off this thing. Listen, somebody... Don't you let somebody who got their own plan and agenda try to make you think you're not handling your business because it's not what they see. Get away from them. Because what I can guarantee you is this. If your heart is pure and you're doing, you're doing the things, you're not the one like mealy mouthed and God, well, you didn't, but you're actually in your word and you're not doing it to get praised. You're doing it because you really keep your happiness in the Lord. That was on Tuesday. Go back to that one. You're really focused on that. OK, you're really focused on that. If you pay attention to the theme of each one of these days, I was hoping somebody caught it. The theme is this. Every one of these scriptures is telling you keeping God first is the cost of entry, period. It don't even matter what comes behind it. And what's happening is people are skipping over the cost of entry and they're hopping over the gate. Oh, baby, that's a revelation. Check this out. What happens if you go to Six Flags or if you go to some amusement park and you try to skip through and cut the line? They're going to kick you out. They're not just going to tell you get to the back of the line. If they see you, you, you about that thievery. If you say, oh, look at that roller coaster and you go hop over the gate to go to the roller coaster, they're going to be like, oh, no, no, no. They're not even going to let you pay because now you're trying to skip steps. You're trying to skip people and you're not trying to pay. So now you're lacking integrity. So I want you to see something. What you think it's like when you're skipping steps with God? Baby, that's the cost of entry. If you don't pay the cost of entry, you get put out. Don't get put out your promise because you don't want to pay the cost of entry. Ooh. That's a word. That's a word. Don't get put out your promise because you don't want to pay the cost of entry. Okay? Listen, the thing that I need you to understand right up in this little space right here. Okay, it's simply this. The enemy has a very clear plan for you. Steal, kill, and destroy, right? Very clear. So what? this is what he's looking at. He's looking at that, I love God. He's looking at your half-hearted, I love God. Or, you know, you don't love God. 
he looking at that like it's half-hearted. Like, oh, they singing that, right? But I can see me and my minions, they have no evidence of that. I see no evidence of what they singing about. Oh, Lord, this one thick today, baby, right? So what he does is he keeps sending you quote-unquote rewards. He's sending you the counterfeits and the fake lake. He's sending it. He's sending that because he's like, they like kind of lukewarmy over here. They like love God and they all Jesus-y and they seem like they cool. They might wear something on their shirt or they might, you know, say something every now and then, but they not really bout it. So I could just kind of send them a fake reward because they obviously not in their word. So it's mad easy to pull a fast one on them. Okay, that this is what's going on, y'all. I know you don't like to hear it. I didn't like to hear it. I still have, to, like I said, even though I've gone through some of these things, I still try to stay on top of things so that I don't have to go through it again. That's just the reality of it. Okay, so what he's saying is, it's like, oh, they think they're gonna get a reward, but let me show you this. Like they doing this and they doing that. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to send them a pig with lipstick on it, and everywhere. The real thing is, I'm going to send them the fake version of it. So if the real thing have a big component, they're going to give that one a big a big component, but it might be a fake version of it, right? So I'm going to let y'all use y'all imagination and kind of understand what I mean by that. Meaning there's a real version of something and there's a fake version of something that people pump up to try to get attention. It comes in that form. And, and what you have to understand is, if the enemy knows your real thing is big like that, then he's going to send something that not only makes your eyes going to catch it, it's he's going to send you a shiny thing. Either it's going to be a pretty girl or a fine man or the, the dream job of all dream jobs, or it's going to be the car of all cars. But you don't know that they done took the speedometer out, got a whole new motor. It was wrecked up total. And they didn't even tell you that. And it's going to, you going to be on the road 20 minutes. It's going to conk out and be dead. Right? Like these are the kind of things that the enemy is looking like he casing a joint. He trying to see what you're doing. Cause he's like, yo, they're not on top of it. They don't they don't they don't understand that. They don't understand that I like I like the details. And that that's another thing about the Lord, y'all. The Lord loves details and he's very intricate with us, but the devil is in the details too. He tries to do the same thing. You want to know why? That's why you could say all in one sentence that we are his workmanship. And, and, and he's, 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 he's handily crafting us and it's very specific with a lot of details, but that's how come you could also say the devil is in the details. Cause then if he sends you something counterfeit, you could say, you know what they, okay. That, oh, 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 okay. That's not quite what I thought it was going to be. Or, you know, Hey, that is what I thought it was going to be. And that's another thing too, you know, unless you are doing what you know you need to be doing between you and the father, trust me. Let me tell you something, without a shadow of a doubt, if you don't get a handle on this, you're going to remain overwhelmed. And for those of you who are annoyed, you're going to stay annoyed and you will continue to be waiting for something from God that not only did you not put yourself in position to, but it's something he never promised you. Because a lot of y'all are mad at God and waiting on God for something that he never promised you. That is why I call this a reward. Many of you are waiting on a quote unquote reward for something that God is telling you, I never told you to cash in. That's somebody else's reward. That's not your reward. Ooh, y'all, I know this one was, was an ouchy ouch today. But remember what I told y'all, okay? This is what we're gonna go out, we're gonna leave out on this one. Don't get put out of your promise because you don't want to pay the cost of entry. You cannot get your reward if your mind is not right and your focus is not where it needs to be first. I hope y'all enjoyed today, y'all. We got one more day left of this series and I pray. Y'all let me know in the comments if it blessed y'all. Please let me know how y'all feel about it. Let me know if it's affecting you in any way. I really, really pray that it is. Uh, make sure you download the ebook if you have not. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. And y'all, please share. 
I have the announcement. I've been mentioning it every now and again about my Patreon, but I'm going to do an official announcement within the next couple of days. And I will tell y'all the tears and all of those things with it. And then you'll get way more tea, way more personal information. And it's worth it. I got courses. I have a bunch of dope stuff. You're going to be like, dang. But y'all, I count it. And I already have like well over 100 pieces of curated content that I created for y'all just in the first 75 days of the year. So I cannot wait to share that with you. I have all of that kind of piled up and I'm ready to get it out there. So keep listening. We have one more day left and y'all, you don't want to miss tomorrow. Tomorrow is called a double portion. Okay? So I want you to get in there. And tomorrow, believe it or not, is based on a group of scriptures that talk about a double portion. So I definitely want you to tune in for that. And I will see you guys tomorrow on Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too. Oh, God hits.